All right, coming up, a pregnant Florida mom killed home invaders with an AR-15. How will this affect the gun control debate? We'll discuss right after this. Well, there's one story about an AR-15 being used to shoot someone that the mainstream media is trying not to tell you because it's the story of a good guy using it against a bad guy. An eight-month pregnant Florida mom an eight-month pregnant Florida mom grabbed her AR-15 when two armed home invaders stormed the family home, beat and pistol-whipped her husband. That's him right there. You can see his face is all banged up. And then held the husband and the 11-year-old daughter at gunpoint. The woman's husband told local Florida media that two men broke into the home and demanded everything they had. The man then said, we don't have anything. We're not a wealthy family. Things then got violent and the burglars, the home invaders, not burglars, home invaders, started pistol whipping him. While the wife heard what was going on, she grabbed that AR-15. She shot one of the intruders, killing him. Authorities are still looking for the second suspect. This is why people need high capacity weapons. That's why I want to welcome in our next guest, Dr. Miguel Faria. Dr. Faria is the author of the new book, America, Guns and Freedom, A Journey into Politics and the Public Health and Gun Control movements. Dr. Fari, good to see you. I'm happy to be here. You know, I raised this case in Florida because we constantly hear the narrative. Americans don't need an AR-15. It's a weapon of war. And I often argue back as a big Second Amendment guy, I'm a collector, I'm a competitive shooter. If you live in a rural area and multiple armed bad guys kick in your door and you're a, in this case, pregnant mom, doctor, you certainly do need to have more firepower than those bad guys. Oh, I, we, I had a friend, uh, Brian Rigsby, not far from where I live. He was uh, uh, camping in the Oconee Forest sure. with a friend when he was attacked by two crackheads uh, who came in with 12-gauge shotguns and what saved his life uh, was the fact that he had a mini, a Ruger Mini-14, which is a so-called assault weapon. Yep. In fact, they are semi-automatic uh, rifles in which you have to pull the trigger each time to fire a bullet. But if he had not had that firearm, he and his friend would be dead. Yeah, he I have, I have one of those. Wounded. Yeah, he I have one of those one rifles. Of the assailants, yeah. And the other one was wounded yep. and uh, he, he saved his life. I have one of those rifles and they're common sporting rifles used on farms quite often. A narrative the left won't tell you. So let's talk about your book. It seems like this was all sparked in you when you were asked to testify to a congressional committee back in 1996. Tell us about it. Well, you know, it's an interesting story. Uh, I have been a critic of the public health establishment when it comes to the gun and violence research. Uh, and I was asked by the committee, what did I think of this research? And I had to answer uh, very sincerely that the research was nothing but junk science. Uh, that uh, it was politicized, result-oriented research, which uh, that means that it had preordained conclusions. Right. Con Only confirmation bias. That concluded that guns were bad were published. And uh, otherwise, they will not be published. And there was no science in those reports. And that, that uh, my testimony was in the spring of 1996. That summer, I am happy to report to you that that's when uh, the Dickey Amendment was passed, which forbid public, the public health establishment at the CDC to pass any more gun control propaganda, which is the way that we describe that kind of research. And uh, I want to point out to you that, uh, you know, you hear the, the news media saying that Congress had banned research uh, of gun violence, and right. that is not true. What Congress did was to restrict politicized, result-oriented junk science. In other words, no more gun control propaganda. And I, I think they act very wisely. And I'm proud that I was one of the four people who testified. The other, another one was, for example, Dr. Timothy Wheeler, who is the founder of Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership, an organization that I think every healthcare provider should join. Yeah, well, you know, this was the CDC using taxpayer money to do what you say, it, you correctly say. It was, it was anti-gun propaganda 
but disguised under the banner of objective medical research. Now, you've got people, though, doctor, that don't study the issues or flat out lie to the American people. I believe a guy like Beto O'Rourke, who just dropped out of the presidential race, former congressman, he knew full well about the Dickey Amendment. The man was a member of Congress. He understood the flawed research behind it. But he still went out there and, in my opinion, lied to the American people, calling semi-automatic rifles weapons of war, demanding that they be confiscated, bought back. Of course, confiscated at the barrel of government's gun, right? What's good for government, you know, is, is fine, but that's not good for the people, us lowly peasants. But the, I, I feel that there should be some kind of penalty when an elected member of Congress, a former elected member of Congress, goes out there and lies to the American people, especially about their fundamental Second Amendment rights. Exactly. You're exactly correct. And this misinformation continues. And, I, you know, I also heard him say that, well, we don't allow people to have tanks and bazookas. Right, right, and, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, those are not firearms that were for individual members of back then, what they call the militia, which today means every person who is capable of bearing arms and is a citizen. Right. Uh, and therefore, that parody, that, that, that was nonsense, uh, co- talking about tanks and bazooka, that had nothing to do with small arms. It was fear monitoring. We're talking about a small arms and the so-called assault weapons are nothing but, you, as you have very well described, semi-automatic uh, rifles, which you have to pull the trigger each time uh, to fire a shot, as opposed to automatic weapons that have been banned since 1934. Right, right. Uh, you got to jump. You could buy a fully... Yeah, you could buy a fully automatic weapon, but you got to jump through hoops and hurdles. It's very expensive, and there are multiple, multiple governmental checks in place. You know, Doctor, I want to talk to you before I let you go. I live in South Florida. I lived in Miami for 11 years. I have many, many friends from Cuba. Their their parents came from Cuba. In some cases, my friends were first generation and were able to come to the United States. And then friends from Venezuela who started coming. Few people understand the need for the Second Amendment, understand the need for the Bill of Rights, like my friends who came from these communist or socialist countries. They see how quickly a government can get out of control and brutally oppress its citizens. Why do you think more people don't understand that? There are still liberals in this country who glorify Cuba and the Castros. And, and you know, you know, they don't look at the lessons of history. You know, right. look at Cuba. You know, Batista, the the so such a malign dictator as he was, he allowed citizens to have firearms, but they were registered. Well, when the revolution uh, succeeded in 1959, one of the first things that Fidel Castro and Raúl Castro did was to send thugs, which were called, unfortunately, they were called militia. Right. And they they sent them to every other registrar's office. And then after that, they went to uh, house by house and confiscated those weapons. In another book that I published some years back, Cuban Revolution, I discussed the the case of my father when they came to get his 45 caliber pistol. (laughs) But uh, we'll have to leave that for another time. (laughs) But I I want to have you back because I am dying to hear that story. Dr. Miguel Faria, Dr. Faria, great, great to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Stick with us. 